What? Six Uru Crash. I believe we are losing the Citadel now for like third time or something. That's what is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sinus channel, my name is Shanks and today we are playing a 1v1 matchup on a beautiful map for of Aizen in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22 in a random mirror match and of course, of course, of course, of course you will get to play the Aizen God faction but you know what, I will take it because I am playing against one of the best if not the best 1v1 player in the history of Battle for Middle Earth 1 Stevie, who was able to dominate the BFME 1v1 competition scene for multiple years back in time when the game was way more active but unfortunately he wasn't playing for a long time and I was able to convince him to get back to the game because we are about to host a big tournament the World Championship 2022 by the way it's an evil mirror matchup against Isengard so it's an Isengard mirror but I'm so excited because Stevie is back in the game he might be rusty but when he gets back to form guys holy guacamole that's gonna be BFME Esports, more entertaining than League of Legends Esports. Trust me on that one. You will have so much fun watching this person. He is nuts, okay? He plays out of his mind and I will have to focus a little bit to beat him. And by the way, guys, if you want to support the World Championship, which is gonna be a cash prize tournament, you can do that for free. First of all, please make sure to follow me on my Twitch channel. You can find the link for that in the description down below. And the second thing is, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can connect it to your Twitch account you can subscribe to me for free and it will support me which we will be using to increase the cash price for the upcoming tournament and this way the people the players the viewers everybody is going to have way more fun okay back to the game we are in a isengard mirror match he's rushing me i'm rushing him so we are pretty much doing the same thing he knows the strategies of course I mean, even if you don't play with me for many, many years, it's like, you know, pretty much being on a bicycle. After a few minutes, you will get used to it and you will be just too good to go, you know what I mean? Okay, after destroying this furnace, we need to get the Uruk back because I believe he was able to capture my settlements, I was able to capture his settlements, so we are kind of trading the sides, but I need to get my side back. And also we are on the patch 2.22, the version 2.8, which was dropped today. And you can also open your BFME launcher and click on update to be just up to date with the most recent version of the patch 2.22, which again is going to be the version 2.8. And hopefully in the version 3.0, we will also be able to implement the new evil campaign. Remember the good campaign already got rewards in the version 2.5, I believe it was. And in 3.0, we will also implement the evil campaign and if you played the good campaign of the patch 2.2, you know what we are aiming for. We are aiming for a big challenge and accomplishing the good campaign as well as accomplishing the evil campaign in the version 3.0 is going to be, of course, a big challenge. And hopefully you are into that because the beast game campaign is great, but it's too easy. And I'm, I'm assuming as a viewer of the Beyond Sana's channel, your skill level got increased big time in the last few months and for that reason you are ready for any challenge we can bring up to you guys okay our eco is looking good um map control is okay i mean he's reclaiming his own stuff what i will be trying to do very soon is i'm gonna try to creep with my uruks and again we need to make sure to hurt this eco as much as we potentially can the isengard mirror matches are usually not lasting forever so it might be a quick game and when we get a little bit more Ecom, we can rush him with blades and heavy armor. Okay, let's capture this one and then we can group all of them, war chant them and try to creep, okay? Alright, we need one more Urukai to get the Uruk pit to level 2, which will give us the chance to recruit the Berserkers. And they're gonna be needed for the map control fights. They are fast and they are also very strong against Uruks. Uh oh he's coming man i didn't expect that one to be honest i need to build towers um but my uruk is level 2 now i will get the chance to recruit these berserkers they should be hopefully able to defend my vorchan unfortunately is on cooldown i was just using it a few seconds ago to creep and it might actually be a bad choice so let's hope that he won't be able to deal too much damage to me i mean he has no bleeds yet so once the vorchan is off my tower should be able to deal with them but he's trying to destroy my Uruk pits. I'm gonna try to get map control in the meantime, which is very important. 
Okay. We can also try to finish this one off. Hopefully, he cannot finish my Uruk Pit, man. Would be actually pretty bad for me. Because the Uruk Pit, um, you lose the production speed when your Uruk Pit gets destroyed. Level 2 gives you much higher production speed and also gives us the chance to recruit the Berserkers, you know? I want to repair this, actually, with my workers if I can. I should have done this way before, actually. Uh, it's a little bit too late now. Oh, man. Oh, that's really bad for me. Oh, that's really, really bad for me. Guys, I need to stop talking when I'm playing. Because I cannot play and, you know, commentate at the same time when I play against a very good player like Stevie. I don't want to lose this game. It's going to be embarrassing. Because he hasn't played this game for like you for like years, you know. Losing against a, losing against Stevie, there is no shame in it. But losing against Stevie when he didn't play for like three years, oh, that would be kind of rough for me, you know. It would hurt my population, and I don't want this to happen. But fortunately, he's playing against my main faction because remember, I get to play Isengard almost exclusively. From when I pick random, I would. I would say I'm getting 80% of the time Isengard faction. You can see Industries Reward, because now you can only use it on one single furnace. Um, but it gives you 300% boost. So it's the same value in a castle map, but it's way weaker in a camp map. In a camp map, every building was too close to each other. And with the industry, you would be able to hit six furnaces or slaughterhouses at the same time, which would be a huge advantage to the evil factions. And it needed some sort of adjustments, you know? But again, boys, nothing we do for the patch 2.22 is set in stone. Remember, the patch 2.22 comes with a launcher, and you don't need to manually download files, move them around. Whenever there is an update, open your launcher, click on update, and you are set in stone. You know, just you're good to go. And if the change we implemented is not going to be a great one, hey, guess what? We can, you know, remove it, adjust it, change it in the following versions. Okay, so um, I'm gonna rush him very soon with heavy armor and forge blades. I'm, I need to wait though. Um, I have like no money. Uh, there are no workers for whatever reason. We need to definitely replace them. Alright, boys. It's actually exciting, dude. I'm playing against TV. Dude, it's been a long time since I played against him the last time. I believe it was like way before I created my YouTube channel. I'm talking about a time in 2005, 2006-ish. And now here we are after 6-7 years. I mean, we used to play always into patch 1.06. I mean, I'm being honest, he was too strong, you know, way back then, nobody was able to beat this person, he was able to win so many tournaments, so much competition, I mean, we are, again, we are talking about the time when the game was way more active, I mean, when there were, like, really, really great players, you know, around the time, unfortunately, in 2022, we don't have this many players anymore, but we also got lots of new people, thanks to the patch 2.2, the interview with me launcher, we get always more people to play the game, and I see always more activity in the game ranger. And trust me on that one, with the world championship coming up, we will have even more activity. And I would love to play with you guys. And I would love to also meet you in my next live streams regarding the world championship. Again, you can find the link for that in the description down below. Okay. Alright, so let's creep this. We cannot really do much more because our units are badly damaged, so we should be just trying to creep at this point. Yeah. Get more power points. We will get to freezing rain very soon. And I'm gonna recruit more units very, very soon though. And I'm gonna also buy fire arrow. You can skip that, but I just wanna get done with it. Then I don't need to rebuild the armory if I need it later on, you know? Okay, once it's finished, we can demolish the armory too and build another furnace. I'm gonna make combos now. Combos are better in the late game. I mean, Uruks are strong because they are quite mobile. They are way faster. That's the problem when you combine units with each other, you will lose a lot of movement speed. So Uruk solo are so much faster than combos. We can try to creep this, no problem. Okay, we are in a good spot. Um, I think we got also a decent amount of map control. We will get a lot of money from the creepings, creeping action too. I believe the opponent player TB wasn't able to creep anything so far. Which is pretty good for us, you know? Creeping doesn't only give you money and experience, experience points, but also power points. So it's like win-win-win situation. You get extra cash, experience on your units, and also power points. Everything is so good to get a huge advantage. Oh, he's coming! I see one Uruk in the middle, shouldn't be able to achieve too much. Oh, oh! 
How many? How many? How many does he have? One, two, three, four. Okay, it's time to build towers. Stevie, don't do this to me, my friend. Don't do this to me. Stevie, not today. Four Uruks. I, I, need, I can't war chant this. I need to group this together, actually, to war chant all together. And he's gonna bring even more Uruks. What? Six Uruk rush. How am I supposed to defend this, man? My towers, they cannot deal with that. Okay, I mean, we need to spam Berserkers, but again, with the Forge Blades, you can destroy even my Uruk within a second and a half. The Uruk, um, the Forge Blades on Uruks is just a huge power spike. Uh oh am I gonna lose the game now? Hopefully not. Hopefully not, boys. I mean, we are winning on this side, but the problem again, what I was just mentioning, my Uruk has been destroyed. My combos cannot keep up with the speed of the Uruks, you know? They are about to destroy the Orphank. Oh, boy. I mean, I could go for the Devastation almost, but I'm not gonna do this. I'm also not on point with the demolishing of the buildings. Actually, we are losing so many power points. I mean, we are giving him too many power points. I'm losing my base, dude! We need this, uh, we need this outpost, huh? Because we need to use this outpost to make more Uruk pits, you know? Because I cannot build anything in my base until I rebuild my citadel, and that's gonna take some time. So for that reason, we need the outpost as like a second base, so we can keep doing stuff. Because we are basically out of the game now. Dude, we just lost 50% of the entire castle to like 4 or 5 Uruks. All of a sudden, he bring them. It was such a big surprise to me. But luckily, we have map control, and remember what I always like to say. Map control is everything, and even though we lost a lot of the base, we have still money recover we just gotta make sure that we will be able to defend unfortunately he was able to destroy multiple level 3 buildings and uh, which we can't replace okay i mean we are kind of poor though <laughs> we are kind of poor i'm being honest guys we are kind of really really poor i don't know i don't know i mean he keeps spamming uruks Maybe going for the combos was not a good idea. Um, because I cannot keep him keep the speed, you know? That's not possible. Okay. I mean, we need to replace everything we lost. But I'm gonna go actually for... Um, Pleasing Rain. Next, I'm not gonna go for land or devastation. I mean, devastation would be quite helpful to fill up the base, but I guess we cannot really do this. I need one combo in my base, though. Again, he's coming one more time, and that's the speed of the Isengard infantry boys. You know, they are so fast; it's hard to deal with that. Okay, you can stay here. Oh boy, <laughs> dude, I just rebuilt my <laughs> citadel. I'm gonna lose it again very soon. I'm gonna actually go for a counter attack with these three Uruks. Maybe I can achieve something. Oh boy. Oh boy. I mean, the problem is potentially we are a little bit too late for the Uruk crash, and every single building from the Isengard player's TV should be now level 3. Uh, I'm gonna try anyway. Let's go. Let's go. Let's try to do some counter damage, shall we? I mean, map control is looking good, but we are forced, of course, to reinvest all the money into rebuilding the stuff we just always lose. I mean, Stevie is popping off, dude. It's unbelievable. The performance of this player, despite being the despite the fact that he was not around for many, many years. And I cannot wait to fight against him and also other people in the tournament. Because I'm also participating in the tournament. And trust me, there is competition. There are very good players in the tournament participating. And I need to train to kind of get better, to get the chance to defeat, you know, defeat them. To beat them all. Okay, we have one combo in the base, though. That's pretty good. I mean, he keeps recruiting these Uruks and sends them forward. Unfortunately, unlike him, we have no Uruk pit level 3. That means we cannot keep up with the speed of the spam. Because if you don't know, the Uruk pit level 3 will produce the units 50% faster in compared to our Uruk pit level 1. I'm gonna give him fire arrow and put him inside his rail. I mean, we are losing this fight too. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. I'm gonna try to save this level 2 units. But I'm gonna try to fight around the range of the Citadel, so they can shoot, you know, deal damage in the meantime. 
Boys, we are falling apart. We cannot even get map control at this point. I mean, we can lose this outpost too, man. Run. Uruks. Reclaim. We are poor. We are broke. I mean, our combos are doing a good job, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to actually turn this around. This outpost is gone. There is no way we can save that. So let's play another one, shall we? I mean, industry is quite helpful, um, but we didn't go for any other money-making ability. We didn't go for fuel the fires. We didn't go for devastation. My units kind of got back to <laughs> the crossbow man. Okay, it's not a big deal though. It's not a big deal. All right, uh, that's like 700 gone for no reason. Run, you fools! I believe what we need is a warp pit, boys. Uh, you know, because at this point he's just spamming Uruks, and I believe the Warp Riders could counter that. So let's build the Warp Pit and recruit some Warp Riders! More of them are coming non stop. We need also combos. I'm gonna shoot them with Fire Roll and make more combos. A combos is a good investment into the mid to late game. I mean, in late game. We are already in the mid game. He has also Freezing Rain. This game is looking kind of tough for me, though. I mean, if I can define this without losing too much, maybe we should be in a good spot. I need my war riders fast on the field. Come on now, please. Oh, boy. I mean, he's smart, you know? He doesn't bother fighting against my army. He's trying to keep them busy with, like, one or two Uruks. But he's always uh, focusing on the buildings, which is the best thing he can do. Okay, we need to make sure our eco is good. Um, the Orphank is about to fall one more time. <laughs> I believe we are losing the Citadel now for like third time or something. That's kind of crazy, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I have bad news. We are falling apart. We are falling apart. Let's use Hall Ability, Trample. Try to not lose the Warp Pit. Because we need more Warp Riders very, very soon. I believe if we can survive that, the Warp Riders they will be definitely a good investment. And if nothing else, they will force the opening player's TV to actually recruit some pikemen to deal with them. But the Uruks with heavy armor and forge blades and uh, warchant are just not only dealing insane amount of damage, but also being extremely tanky at the same time. Remember, the Uruks in BFM1 are the best warchmen in the game, by far. So we need the Uruk pit also at the outpost. Um, because we cannot build anything here, we need to wait uh, for, the, for our tank to be back up, you know? Oh, but he's coming again from the bottom side. Trample them. Look, the Uruk's just too tanky, man. Just too tanky, man. It's unbelievable how tanky they are. We need more war riders. Okay, let's go for a counter attack with the combos if we can. Uh, we c I mean, I can. I'm pretty much playing without the Uruk pit for the past last for the past three minutes, boys. Because the second I'm building it up, he's always there to destroy it. It, it feels like that he has a permanent vision of Palanty on me, you know? He always knows my next move. I'm about to lose this fight against the Uruks, by the way. I cannot believe it. Warg Riders, come on. You need to be buff, man. You need to be buff, Warks. I mean, my whole ability was on cooldown, but still, you know? Uruks should be countered by the Warg Riders, but it was not looking like that at all. Okay, we have Industry once again. Um, We need to um recruit more, 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 more. I mean, we are kind of broke too. Okay, we can now watch on all together and go for a push. I'm gonna ride through them in Warchant and then we can easily defend this. Nice, okay. All ability too. Alright, our units are respawning. It's very important to not, to not lose a full battalion. I mean, I lost multiple full battalions this game. But hopefully I won't be losing more than that. He's gonna use land. I can cover this, no problem. Give me a second. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Nice. Again, you, should, you don't want to use the land first. But maybe he was thinking that I don't pay attention to that. Because land is not about giving, uh, getting additional armor. It's much more about denying your opponent to get more armor and leadership. Because it negates all of that, you know? Okay, map control is looking good, but we are about to lose the combos. We lost one of them, unfortunately. Okay, let's come to this spot. 
I mean, the, the game is starting to look again very good for us. I mean, he kind of needs to be careful now because he cannot send the Uruks one by one. I will just trample them every single time. And my Vorks are quite mobile, you know? They should be in a good spot. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so um, look at the minimap, dude. That's that's the thing you need to always pay attention to, you know. The minimap is looking more red than green. So I'm assuming he's like, what, two settlements outside? We have like much more than that. And we can also protect this outpost, protect the path uh, pathway at the bottom side. And after recruiting like two more combos, I want to go ham. I want to go ham for a big push. And I can also, what you can do is when you have like a combination of infantry and cavalry, at the same time, like we do now in this game, we can ride through our own army and unfortunately on all of them together. And the idea behind this is going to be to keep fighting against the enemy units with the combos, with the fire arrows upgraded crossbowman combos. In the works, they will just try to deal economical damage by focusing on the enemy buildings exclusively. That's going to be the plan of this game. But we need at least one more combo. So ideally, we want to have like three combos and maybe even loads later on. But now you see, here's Pikeman. And now we need to pay attention. I mean, again, you don't want to lose a, lose a full battalion, even though money is looking good this time, but still, you know, like getting a Vork Rider and giving, up, giving him upgrades like Forge Blades, Heavy Armor and Banner is very expensive and losing them is quite painful. That might be one of the bigger differences in, comp in uh, BFME 1 to BFME 2, because in BFME 1, losing a unit has a much bigger punishment in compared to Battle from Middle-Earth 2 or Rise of the Witch King, much, much bigger punishment. I mean, what a great game, dude. I think that's one of the better Isengard mirrors I've ever played in my life. I have really, really enjoy right now. And he, that he comes. But I think we can defend this. We have like two combos and four Vork Riders. It's kind of crazy. Again, right through them. Vork and all of them. Yes, Palantir. He's zooming right now. <laughs> he's zooming right now. You can see the white glow animation. He palantir himself. But he has no pikes in Porcupine formation. He has the Pikeman Uruk combo, which is also pretty good against Cavalry. But we can still trample them on the ground. Warchant at 2, but we are freezing reinactive, so the Warchant doesn't do anything. Now we can push him. Now we can push him. There's also multiple pikemen. Again, we can split up, use the mobility advantage, take down all his eco outside first. And this pikemen Uruk combo, they don't stand a chance against the crossbowman Uruk combo. Because the Uruks in the front are very hard to deal with for the pikemen, they cannot really do much about that. And our crossbowmen are dealing constant damage without being touched. Okay, I mean, Lord's level 3 already, that's pretty good, man. I like that. We can use Industry, um, and we are almost at the point in which we can even recruit Saruman. Oh, no! Oh, <laughs> close, 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 close. Okay, here he comes from bottom. But again, we want to have units everywhere on every single spot. We have still available command points. We want to fill this all the way to full. And again, with three combos now, we can try to go for a push. The good thing is, Lord's is level 3. So we need only two more levels to get to level 5, you know? I mean, you can see the movement speed difference between the combos and Uruks. Uruks are just way faster. Way, way faster. Alright, so let's group all of them. And again, Warchan is almost back up in about 30 seconds. And then we can use it and go for a massive push. But one thing you need to always understand. There is no point in the game in which you should care less about map control. You should always give and pay attention about map control and that's one of the reasons why we are still not defeated because TB was always going for this all-out fight he was trying to finish me off with the Uruks but during all this time he was not taking care of the map control so we were always kind of getting enough money to rebuild ourselves you know all right so Warchan available lots of war riders go for a big push and hopefully win this game again keep an eye on your minimap keep always on the settlements an eye and then take care of them. Look, we are moving now from the bottom side, defending from bottom, moving from top, making sure our opponent has zero resource income beside the furnaces inside the castle. Okay, beautiful. And guys, again, I would love to see you guys in the World Championship streams on my Twitch channel. It would really mean a lot to me. And normally I don't do that, 
But, you know, I want to make this to a special event. We are basically having a world championship, a very big tournament for Beef Me 1 in the Rise of the Witch King at the same time simultaneously. Again, every... Oh, hold on. Every single game will be streamed on my Twitch channel. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can connect that to your Twitch account and it will give you the chance to subscribe every month for free. It doesn't cost you a cent, but it will support the channel. So this way we can increase the cash price and make it more entertaining and more interesting for the players, for the viewers, and also later on for the YouTube channel. So it's like a win-win-win situation. And hopefully it's going to be a great event to it. I mean, we were doing something similar to that to in 2019-2020. Uh, for Rise of the Witch King, that's going to be the first world championship ever for Give Me One. Because we had the chance to get so many new people through the patch 2.2 into the game. Including a player like Stevie, who was on exile for many, many years. He's also back inside the jeans. And I'm glad. I'm glad, you know. So we have more competition, more fiesta, more games. And overall, more fun. And he's gonna leave the game and that's it boys. GG well played, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself, keep hitting like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out boys.